بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. As we know, Allah Almighty has confirmed in the Quran in various places that كل نفس ذائقة الموت that every person shall taste death. Um, it's a certainty which will never escape anybody that there will be a time where people will be offering our janazah prayer and they will be burying us uh, in our shrouds, in our simple garments that is a sunnah of the Prophet Offering the funeral prayer is a farad kifaya. In other words, it is a communal obligation it is a responsibility of the community to offer a janazah prayer over somebody who has passed away. And that means if somebody has passed away and nobody in the community offers a janazah prayer, then the whole community will be sinful. So fard kifaya, it means that somebody in the community must fulfill that obligation. That is why we often see that for janazah prayers, uh, the whole community gathers together and this is a, an act of great reward and barakah uh, a means of hopefully salvation and forgiveness for the person who has passed away but also a means of reward uh, for those who are offering the janazah prayer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned this in the hadith that whoever follows the funeral of a muslim in faith and seeking reward and he remains with it until the prayer is offered until the burial is finished, then he will receive two great rewards. Each reward will be uh, the equivalent to the size of Mount Uhud Sharif. So we can only imagine how much reward we receive by offering the Janazah prayer and remaining with the deceased person until they are actually buried. Uh, we will receive uh, rewards equivalent to the mountain of Uhud. In terms of the procedure of offering the Janazah prayer, uh, it is offered while standing. There are no uh, ruku or sujood. There is no bowing or prostrating. There are four necessary uh, takbirs, uh, or saying Allahu Akbar four times. A person will raise their hands for the first takbir only. However, they must utter the other takbirs when the imam recites them as well. After the first takbir, a person will recite the thana just as they do in normal prayers. After the second takbir, they will recite Durood Ibrahimi or the Durood Sharif. After the third takbir, they will offer the dua for the person who has passed away, which has been prescribed in the Sunnah of the Prophet. If they do not know that dua, then they can recite other duas mentioned in the Quran. For example, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Uh, so, a person can offer different du'as which have been uh, prescribed in the Qur'an or the Sunnah. Then after the fourth takbir, everybody will give salam to the right and to the left and that will be the end of the funeral prayer. It is best practice to offer the funeral prayer in an open environment, uh, an open field or by the graveyard, but it is not obligatory to do that. Many people and close relatives of the deceased may, of course, want to see the face for a final time before the burial takes place. That is uh, permissible, uh, although it is not obligatory. Sometimes what happens... Oh no, actually one second. Sometimes, after a person has passed away, the body is transported from one city to another or one country to another. Um, and so... In that scenario, there are occasions where more than one funeral prayer is offered. The funeral prayer generally is a supplication, is a dua for the deceased, and ideally it should be performed once. If, however, the body is being transferred from one country to another, and the one who is legally entitled to lead the prayer the most didn't lead the first time round, then the second offering of the funeral prayer uh, is permissible, uh, as it allows more and more people to offer that prayer and to supplicate for the deceased.